can't help but think that Friday morning is probably going to be a really good day to stay inside. Well, if everything gets canceled. And watch the opening ceremony. <laughs> there you go. So we're here for you. That's it, <laughs> certainly. Well, Peyton has uh, stepped in today, and man, we have a lot that is on our plate, don't we? And, oh, we and do. thankfully, I have another meteorologist that I can bounce ideas off of. Jason's been with me. Holly and I'm and no Matt, good for that. Well, you're, you're, you're the enthusiastic part of it. You're the ooh-wow guy. That's uh, about it. But Holly and Matt have been doing a great job in the yeah. mornings. They'll get you started tomorrow morning. But let's get you caught up with where we are right now. There is the satellite and radar on the big scale. And yesterday, we were telling you there's three pieces that are coming together to make this storm. There's the cold air from the north, the big time moisture from the south, and a big kick of energy that's coming in from the west. All of this comes together as we go through the next 24 hours. Interesting to note, yesterday the forecast models were doing one thing because we had three pieces in three different places. Today the forecast models are doing a little bit better at keeping things tighter, a little bit better consensus, because all three of our pieces are not only here in the U.S., but starting to come together. Tomorrow morning is going to be the one to watch because we'll actually have a storm system. We'll see how these three pieces come together, and that should really help us to hone in on our forecasts. It is going to ride right along a boundary, that cold front. This cold front has huge implications on our forecast because that is the changeover from the rain to snow. How far the front makes it through the area will determine who gets what and how much of what. Uh, but out ahead of that, we've got this beautiful day today, 40s, 50s. But then I have to show you the fact that we have alerts that stretch over 2,000 miles from the Rio Grande all the way up to New England. And these alerts are not only winter storm watches, but winter storm warnings and, and advisories as well. We have both. We have a winter storm warning that goes Wednesday night through Friday morning for our lakeshore counties. And then farther south, it's a winter storm watch. Don't be surprised if we start to see more counties lining up in pink simply because we're starting to get into a better time frame and we're really starting to nail down the details. Details. At least the National Weather Service is going to be doing that. We don't issue the watches and alerts, but they will really kind of let you know and we'll let you know their messaging as we head through the night. So rain is the way things are going to start, and that's a concern. We've got melting taking place today. The drains are still blocked in most cases, and so now you're going to throw a little bit of rain on that. I'm not worried about rivers. What I'm worried about is road and street flooding, your property, all that standing water that's going to be hanging around as we get into our changeover time. And that looks to take place in the late evening and the overnight. The pink line is the delineation between where we have the rain, we get into some sleet, and then it's all snow farther to the north. And once that cold front comes in, and that's what the changeover is based on, as that cold front comes in, look at the temperature drop that accompanies it. So we are going to see a pretty rapid freeze up here. This is also going to contribute to the fluff factor. I can't stress enough how snow types, we are literally trying to forecast snow crystal types uh, to help nail down these exact uh, accumulation numbers. The snow crystals will be heaviest, wettest, densest, and probably a little sleety farther south. Meanwhile, west, it'll be nice and fluffy. So by 7 a.m. Thursday, we are all snow with the exception of southern portions of Tuscarawas and Carroll counties where we're likely to have a little bit of that ice uh, going on the freezing rain and some sleet. So very heavy snow along the lakeshore areas and again farther west that's where the highest fluff factor is that's why they have the higher snow t accumulations out toward Toledo but just this ice mix and snow that's kind of a wide variety of accumulation potential here so give us a little bit of breathing room we're going to try and do that for you but right now we're looking at 10 to 15 inches of snow for Cleveland down to Akron. That would include northern sections of Richland County, Shelby on up into the Norwalk area. Sandusky and over to Toledo. That's where we could get higher numbers, over 15 inches. We could. Uh, still watching to see how that's going to evolve. But this 5 to 10 is going to be uh, a little bit heavier on the north end, a little bit less on the south end, and all of these numbers are going to start to shift around as we see this storm really start to line up. So I can't stress enough, it's all about the impacts, not the numbers. This will be a high impact storm, very high impacts on the roads for air travel for your school closings. Yeah, Thursday, maybe Friday too. Good chance. Uh, and then the power outage as well. But you have a chance to get ready for it. And Peyton has more on that. 
Yeah, and you were just talking about breathing room. The idea of having the breathing room for a final prep, well, that is going to happen this evening. So if you have the ability to get out, maybe head to the grocery store, maybe kind of tidy up around the house when it comes to moving that pile of snow that's been there for about a week on end, this is the night to do so. We're in for a few messy days, not only from tomorrow, but this takes us all the way through Friday. And then beyond that, we are in for another Arctic blast to come. So what stays in the way of not only just the wet slush kind of activity is going to freeze once again. So I'm going to take you through just our Union Home Mortgage extended forecast here really quickly because this drives the point home also here. 39 for your Wednesday, 27 though for Thursday and temperatures falling sharply into Friday. We're only going to be back in the upper teens and then we hang in the low 20s for the beginning half of the weekend here. And things get a little easier as we kind of breathe into next week together as well. But once again, Jay, this is something that we deal with time and time again. This is not going to be necessarily the biggest event, and we will get through it, of course, together. Well, it is uh, February now, and we are in Northeast Ohio. So, yeah, we're, we're tough. We're used to this kind of thing.